What is going on guys, MJ2105 Gundam here, and today I'm going to be reviewing the EX Model Hill Dover from Gundam Mobile Suit Igloo. Redeployed as desperate reinforcements for Xeon's invasion under the guise of a test, it's the only mobile tank that exists in the Universal Century because of the lack of further production despite the outstanding battle records of Major Demazier Solnin. Being made up of 12 runners and a water decal sheet for both the Hildover and the original Higher Universal Century Zaku, there's quite a bit of stuff included for a kit made of two colors. The build itself is relatively alright despite the somewhat antiquated gate placement, which doesn't help that both greens are susceptible to nub marks, on top of the caterpillar treads being a bit tough to work with. But it is the instructions that make things very confusing from condensing steps that would have been multiple panels worth into one large panel. While not showing any different angles of the kit to show off where some small parts connect into the blind spots like the butt end of the vehicle. As a whole, while the kit itself features a near high grade level construction, it's the condensed instructions that make everything harder to understand and assemble. After frying your brain from the build, the final results are actually quite impressive. The general sculpting is accurate to the animation model, and the colors are a spot on representation for when the tank was fresh. Although the real impressive thing is the amount of surface detail on every bare surface. The heavy use of defined surface detail to depict the individual armor panels, rivets, and especially the segments on the cannon leaving no room for bare surfaces enriching its overall appearance while not necessitating panel lining because of their high definition. Frankly, for the casual, apart from painting the clear piece for the mono white in a clear or UV reactive pink, the Hildover is good to go. However, while there aren't any missing color apps per se, something about it looking pristine just looks… wrong. So I would highly recommend adding some grit and weathering to the kit, as well as doing some shading with an airbrush to add some desert sand effects. There is nothing wrong with the kit's looks as it is, but it just looks better with the scars of battle. For articulation, the cannon is on a vertical swivel for angling, while the mounted light can swivel for adjustment. The shoulders are on a fairly restricted ball joint, two pivots at the bicep, double jointed elbows, and ball jointed wrists. There's an opening panel on the rotating shoulder armor, while the smoke dischargers can rotate to your liking. The shovels can extend on four joints, as well as rotate at the base. Finally, there's a rotation at the waist, but unfortunately, neither the mono eye nor the tracks can move. Articulation is what you would expect from the Hildolver, considering it only really has a torso for humanoid parts. Unfortunately, neither the shovel joints nor the connections between the three segments of the tank are the most solid in the world, so reinforcement is necessary during the build. The stationary mono eye is a bit of an annoyance as well for poses where it doesn't look dead straight. As for weapons and accessories, apart from the giant main cannon atop its head, you may have noticed that I had the baby machine gun equipped onto the hill Dover at all times, of which features the deployable foregrip. That's because, apart from a pair of trigger finger hands, there's only a left fist included, no neutral option for the right hand. The other trigger finger hand is for use with a standard Zaku 2 machine gun that you will have to steal from your other high grade Zaku 2 kits. Luckily, the one from the high grade revived version works fine enough. Meanwhile, the ammo drum for the baby machine gun can be stored under either shoulder armor panel, and the shovels can deploy for makeshift melee combat, which is very neat. There is also a team of army men included, with one of them standing, who I assume to be Demazier, and two each for the arms outstretched and curled up poses. Not much use to me, but they are pretty neat, I suppose. Finally, there's an alternate midsection of the tank bed to transform the hill dover into its tank mode. Simply remove everything from the existing midsection and the torso section, front abdomen armor, and the rear bridge like section from the ab piece before reattaching the ab armor to the front bed section, the bridge to the rear bed section, removing the manipulators, flipping the shoulder armor down before reassembling the kit. and extending the shovels so that they rest on the front tank bed. Personally, I like this form better than the mobile mode, simply because it looks more compact and like a proper tank you can take to drifting duels in Japan. 
instead of a goofy failed attempt at merging an app from Gundam 00 with a Transformers Decepticon. However, while the inoperable treads and limited display options are minor concerns, the real issue is the even looser tank bed connection, which worsens the handling experience for the kit until you decided to leave it alone. The EX Model Hill Dolver is a pretty decent kit, especially considering its age. The visuals are impeccable for a foundation, the transformation is simple to execute despite it being a parts formation, and it has enough articulation in its mobile mode to pull off a good number of poses. However, it isn't without its fair share of issues. The immovable mono eye for a design with no head is a bit annoying for poses, the confusing extrusions hamper the build experience, and more importantly, the general solidity of the kit isn't exactly strong. While not entirely excusable, those are more problems that experienced builders should be able to fix, which is who the EX model line is marketed towards to begin with. Could a potential modern redux do with some improvements? Eh, I guess so. But honestly, besides the need for some TLC, one shot is really all the Hill Dover really needs to impress. And that's all for me. Thank you for watching. Drop a like and comment if you did enjoy the video. Subscribe for more content like this, and feel free to follow me on social media with the links down below. That said, take it easy, stay safe, and I'll see you all in the next video. Peace out, guys. Bye bye.